up guys omni here you guys know how it goes another day another video last night i tweeted i sleep what recent news topics tweets videos y'all want me to talk about tomorrow and yeah guys today it's wednesday october the 6th i haven't made a video in the past two days sorry i've been too busy gaming <laughs> but every time i do that it seems like the world goes absolutely nuts and bat crazy we have a lot of news to talk about today a lot of wild things happen today it's sporadic it's all over the place so it's probably will be a big chunky wongy of a video so just sit back relax take your shoes off put your feet up and uh yeah allow me to lay it on you but guys before we get any further i'm happy to announce that today's video was sponsored by mech arena look guys as a gundam anime fan mech arena is the first mobile game that lets me live out my robot pilot dream this game is balanced for maximum competitive play and you would immediately get the sense that skill actually matters if you crave that player versus player competition mech arena lets you do it anytime anywhere personally guys i'm a sniper and what i love most about mech arena is how fluid and natural it feels strategically picking off opponents from halfway across the map. As for the mechs themselves, my two favorite classes are the attackers and the scouts. I love their design. For the attackers, you've got the Paragon, Panther, Guardian, and the super cool Redox as attackers. For the scouts, you've got the Lancer, the Kill Shot, the Shadow, and the Surge, which I still haven't earned yet, but I'm excited to get soon. Yeah, guys, it's spooky season, so Mech Arena has a bunch of exclusive Halloween events, skins, and my favorite, a new Mech Arena weapon called the Disc Launcher. So keep logging on, get your daily rewards so that you can snatch them all. And look, if you're still not sold, guys, this game is completely free to play. And if you use my personal link or scan the QR code, you get one forest digital skin, 200 A coins, and 10,000 credits as a nice starter boost. And if you're quick, you can add me as a friend and we can play some matches together. So yeah, guys, come through, let's get our Gundam on, and special thanks again to Mech Arena for sponsoring today's video. Okay, let's knock out some of these short but sweet ones. Um, Love and Peace Dark said this deleted tweet made by Nintendo Fran. That's correct, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Nintendo Fran's was a little extra uh, horny that day. Um, <laughs> they posted this specific tweet right here of uh, Snake and Zero Suit Samus that was uh, later deleted much, much later in the day after about over 13,000 likes of uh, your boy Solid Snake uh, crawling, you know, and getting a good view I think the funniest part about this picture is not even the picture itself, but the caption of the eye emoji. Like, dog, come on. <laughs> Sometimes Nintendo posts some sus pictures up there to make people think like, hey, are they kind of aware of what's actually happening in this picture? But those eyes emojis tell you everything you need to know about the person that made that tweet. Number two, what you probably need to know, and television. The What If series. This is a series that's on Disney Plus where, hey, what if something else happened in uh, the Disney universe? You know, like what if Captain America was a girl? Or what if some certain person died? What if this happened? What if that happened? Well, as of today, the season finale is finally available for you to watch. So if you guys have been keeping up with it, go ahead and watch it because you know how the internet works now. Whenever something drops, if you don't watch it immediately, spoilers happen everywhere. It's been happening with Squid Game. It's been happening with anime. It's been happening with video game spoilers. So again, no spoilers. I'm not going to give you any, but go watch it ASAP. All right. All right. Number three, what you probably need to know. Uh, I went viral uh, over the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this thumbnail, uh, this person posted Ash said, this is one of the best thumbnails I've ever seen. You guys know when I make my uh, thumbnails on this channel, you know, I, I do it strategically. I do it for fun, you know, games. Uh, but I didn't mean this one right here. I didn't mean this. It's a picture of Matt, Pat, Paimon, and Eminem. And I put out All Out War, but the, the freaking timestamp on the side blocked it out and made it say All Out WAP. And if you know what WAP means, then... That this picture is kind of sus. <laughs> anyway, this picture went viral on Twitter. It went viral on Instagram. It went viral on Facebook. It's been viral on all of the platforms. So yeah, um, I'm looking forward to making more uh, sus Seabach uh, thumbnails for you guys in the future. Number four, what you probably need to know, Metroid Dread. This game is coming out on Friday, two days from now. And yeah, I'll be streaming it on Twitch.tv slash Infernal Omni probably that day or that weekend. But yeah, the scores are finally out. My boy Nabel, aka Nabellion, said Metroid Dread early review score and yeah as you guys can see here it got really good scores five out of five five out of five four point five four out of five four to five ign gave it a nine out of ten nine nine eight point five it's it's uh <laughs> it's looking and shaping out to be an amazing metroid game so you guys 
all play that game or watch someone play it. It's going to be a joy. Again, another short one, and this is something that you guys probably already know. Uh, Ruined Haikyo said, Nick All-Star Brawl has released. I think I was the first person to get all the achievements in it. <laughs> That's pretty amazing. If you guys don't know, Nick All-Star Brawl, the Nickelodeon uh, Super Smash Brothers clone came out on October 5th. And uh, yeah, I've actually already started playing it on my channel and it's pretty fun. Just a quick initial review or reaction to it, just as somebody who's played a lot of Super Smash Brothers. Um, it's fast. It's technical. It's actually might be too fast now that I think about it. Like, <laughs> it might be faster than Melee. There's something about the mechanics of the game where if you jump up in the air, you can literally teleport yourself across the screen. And to be honest, one of the uh, gripes that I kind of have with the game is that I get very, very dizzy playing it. The, the motion or the graphics or the movements, something about it is not smooth enough where it makes me feel just pretty dizzy just watching people zip around the screen like crazy. But in terms of it being competitive, it's there. Uh, it has all the tools for it to be competitive as a rock, paper, scissors element when it comes to aerials where rock beats you know scissors and scissors beats paper kind of thing and uh, the mechanics are really good the, the grab mechanics and it's still different from smash so i think a lot of people are going to play this game it's going to be already in genesis i uh, was at nine or ten so it's already going to be tournament competitive level people are going to be playing this game <laughs> i'm playing this casually i i don't know if i'm going to play this competitively or not but i think you guys should pick it up if you do like smash speaking of smash we'll talk about that a little bit later but if you do want some of that little bit of extra smash in your system yeah, I think this is the game to go for. Number, uh, I don't know, I've lost count on the actual um, <laughs> numbers here, but uh, Netflix released the official Dave Chappelle uh, comedy series, aka Stand Up. You guys know Dave Chappelle, it's Dave Chappelle, probably the number one uh, largest comedian, stand-up comedian in the world. Um, this one said Netflix, Morgan Freeman wants to talk to you about Dave Chappelle, the closer premieres at midnight. So in case you guys are looking for something to watch on Netflix and you want to get offended and probably get told something you don't want to hear and, and then probably also get mad, <laughs> <laughs> or you're like me and you listen to this and you just be like, wow, this guy is a menace to society and absolutely love it. Then yes, you can watch yet another Dave Chappelle stand-up skit. I'm about to be a little bit of a simp right now, okay? Reversal said the Instagram account of the main actors of Squid Game went from 400,000 followers to 14.5 million in less than three weeks following the launch of Squid Game on Netflix. As you guys can see here, her name is Ho Young Chung, and uh, it, it's she's just blowing up massively because she's incredibly attractive. <laughs> Not only is she a great actress, but like, Jesus Christ, I have never seen somebody this androgynous and this attractive in my entire life. Interestingly enough, and yep, I'm going into sip level territories here, fellas. <laughs> I ain't afraid or ashamed to mention it, but apparently she was a model uh, before she was an actress. So she went into modeling, then she went into to the actressing thing. And yeah, did you guys know with Squid Game, this game, this killing game that came out for Netflix, uh, blew up so big that majority of the people who played in that show probably got huge insta fame from just, you know, appearing the cat. Anyway, that's her. No spoilers. I won't talk about the show, but that does bring me up to my next point, which again, I'm going to keep very quick and short and sweet. Guys, I want to talk about Squid Game. <laughs> <laughs> I just realized, like, I was thinking the other day, I was like, man, I got so much that I want to talk about. Like, you know, I want to talk about this show with people, but obviously I don't want to spoil it. So I was like, who do I talk about with it? And I was like, wait a minute, I have, I have a YouTube channel with you guys. But again, no spoilers. So I, I kind of want to talk about it. So help me out here. Okay. Help me figure out a way for me to talk about shows that, you know, include spoilers with you guys together. I'm thinking what I'll do is maybe create a segment. And then I'll put it on there and say, hey, there will be spoilers in this segment kind of thing. I don't know. I'm just topping off the top of my head, but I've been thinking, you know, there are some things that I just want to talk about. <laughs> and I'm really into food. I'm really into uh, movies. I'm really into shows and film and anime. So I would like to add segments like that into the channel. So if you guys think that's a good idea, you guys know I use timestamps. So for whatever reason you don't want to kind of know, I'll always keep you guys protected and safe from the spoilers, okay? I don't mess around with people who spoil shows. But yeah, let me know what you guys think. This is me just kind of just you know asking you guys for what you think about adding segments about things that I just want to talk about or don't just need to make a separate video on it. I don't know. Just just let me know. I'm just, just talking to you right now. Something else that you probably need to know. Jordan said, I thought I seen it all when they were destroying school property for TikTok. Now they are out here slapping teachers. Apparently slapping teachers is the TikTok theme of the month of October or something like this. I have seen some kind of list somewhere and apparently there's like a full school year list of things every month that kids are going to start doing for TikTok, these themes and they're, 
<laughs> if you don't know, last month it was the devious licks. You know, you out there, you go and you steal something from the school and you called it a, a devious lick. Here it is. I found it. I don't know the legitimacy of this, but it's absolutely wild. Here's a full list of TikTok school challenges. Uh, September is vandalized school bathroom. October, smack a staff member, which by the way is assault. And uh, please, please, please don't let this trend. November is kiss your friend's girlfriend at school. Um, all right, okay, okay. December is deck the halls and show your balls. January is jab a breast. Bro, <laughs> that's, that's assault. That's literally sexual assault. This is, this can't be real. February is mess up school signs. Okay, we've downgraded back down to vandalism. Uh, March, make a mess in the courtyard or cafeteria. April, grab some eggs. Another stealing challenge. May is ditch day. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm aware of ditch day. It's, uh, you know, that's fine. And then June, flip off in the front office. And in July, spray a neighbor's fence. It's just, what is this? What is this, guys? Come on. Guys, what's going on, man? I, I actually like TikTok, okay? I've I've found the good side of TikTok. There's this, there's one meme that's going on that everyone's replaying. It's, it's like Saweetie, and she's walking off, and she's like, let's go. Dun, 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 ba, dun, 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 dun. <laughs> and then she walks off, right? And then there's some kind of meme or whatever, and I absolutely love it. I actually think that TikTok is great, but the idea of little kids and teenagers and, and young adults going around and just doing violent things is just absolutely wild just like stop okay what's wrong with you okay don't don't ruin a good thing okay be a decent person like god damn so chef back and a lot of you guys asked me to talk about this yesterday facebook went down along with instagram and whatsapp and everyone migrated to twitter lol this was actually on october 4th today is october 6th so it was two days ago but a lot of you guys were probably affected by this because not only was it facebook and whatsapp but it was also instagram as well everything die i actually made this tweet i said all social media apps down except twitter forcing everyone to play squid game internet edition that's right everyone came together on twitter and for a moment uh everyone was on the same platform <laughs> i think a lot of people started downloading a uh, telegram i heard telegram got like 25 million users in like one day because of this outage and this outage wasn't like a quick blip or like an hour or something like that this thing lasted for several hours if i if i can just estimate i want to say about six to seven hours maybe even more throughout the entirety of the day these biggest apps were just gone so i'm just gonna let you guys know why it happened really fast i'm just gonna look it up i don't know the details yet i'm just gonna let you know why it happened really fast and then that's it so i found what i hope is a decent article talking about it facebook has apologized for the mass outage that left billions of users unable to access facebook instagram whatsapp and messenger for several hours quote to all the people and businesses around the world who depend on us we are sorry for the inconvenience caused by today's outage across all our platforms said santos Jenardin, uh facebook's vice president of infrastructure in a blog post late monday they continue the outage which prevented users from refreshing their feeds or sending messages was caused by quote configuration changes on the backbone routers uh Gennard has said without specifying exactly what the changes were okay that doesn't say anything to me i don't understand what that means the change is called issues uh that interrupted the flow of traffic between routers and facebook's data centers around the world he added quote the disruption to network traffic had a cascading effect on the way our data centers communicate bringing our services to a halt facebook instagram and whatsapp stopped working shortly before noon eastern when the websites and apps for facebook services were responding with server errors just after seven o'clock p.m eastern around six hours after the platforms went offline facebook ceo mark zuckerberg wrote on facebook page facebook instagram whatsapp and messenger are coming back online now and finally apparently this outage made history it said the outage marked the longest stretch of downtime for facebook since 2008 when a bug knocked the site offline for about a day affecting about 80 million users the platform currently has around 3 million users so yeah kind of a big deal right like to, to have your entire social media websites be knocked out with facebook facebook being th absolutely huge now when you kind of think about it now you might want to get the phone numbers to some of your close uh friends and family if you don't already have it just in case this kind of happens again and it's an emergency because i know a lot of people use facebook and instagram and rely on those messenger services 
services to communicate with specific people. So it might be time to go back and, you know, to the old days of acquiring a digital phone number and sending text messages. I know, right? Ooh. Sending text messages, how barbaric. But guys, the drama doesn't even stop there. If you guys didn't know, just two days ago, while Facebook was going through this whole thing, apparently there was some kind of whistleblower uh, that was also happening in Facebook. Whistleblower, if you don't know, is when somebody usually works within a company and then they come out and say, hey, and they snitch. <laughs> And usually they tell confidential information that they're supposed to keep confidential, but usually these whistleblowers are done in a way to protect people outside of the company, which puts a target on their face. Like, yeah, you snitch it, but also you're usually doing this for the greater good kind of thing. The majority of companies have whistleblower policies in place so that people can feel like they, if they need to come out and talk about it, they can go to HR or, or whatever. But yeah, apparently uh, Facebook had a huge one. And uh, this out of the loop thing here said, what's the deal with Facebook whistleblowers? Francis Hughes, is it it's Hughes? What is her name? Her name is Francis Haugen. Francis Haugen, okay. <laughs> I wasn't expecting to be answered within the first four seconds, uh, but her name is Francis Haugen. That kind of reminds me of that uh, Fight Club skit. His name is Robert Paulson. <laughs> anyway, I'm not going to go into too much detail about this, but something that you guys should probably know, this person in the top comments said, answer, at a high level, Hagen provided documentation that seems to say that Facebook execs had data showing that certain products were harmful to users or bad for the public, but did those things anyway, putting profits before people. Wow. What a shocker. <laughs> anyway, I'm not going to read everything. I'm just going to give you guys the juicy parts because this is a very huge article that I just found that kind of goes into it. Frances Hogan, 37, said the thousands of documents she had collected and shared with the Wall Street Journal and U.S. law enforcement showed the company was lying to the public that it was making significant progress against hate, violence, and misinformation. Quote, the thing I saw at Facebook over and over again was there were conflicts of interest between what was good for the public and what was good for Facebook. And Facebook over and over again chose to optimize for its own interests like making more money so yeah that's the facebook whistleblower concept if you guys want to watch the full 60 minutes uh interview uh it's available for you guys to watch on youtube not a surprise all right <laughs> but it seems like uh, it's becoming such a big deal that they're having inner turmoil within the uh the sif senate itself so yeah let me know what you guys feel about this whole facebook thing going down and the whistleblower policy or whatever and let's get into the next topic so uh love and peace and dark and 50 million of you guys out out there said bro you only need one topic for this video <laughs> and that's right ladies and gentlemen uh yesterday super smash brothers ultimate had a uh smash direct 40 minutes with your boy sakurai and they revealed the final last character to enter the game and it was sora from kingdom hearts it was your boy you got a picture right here of disney shaking hands with nintendo with mario itself and it was so hype so guys this entire reveal was a big deal for many reasons okay number one this is like the last time that we're going to see sakurai do some kind of nintendo direct ish showcase with uh, the characters you guys don't know sakurai he's the guy that basically you know created super smash brothers and he's also the person who created kirby as well and he's become more of a on camera personality that we've got to know know well he's kind of like the dad <laughs> of nintendo where every time we watch a smash all right we just kind of want to come to see sakurai as well on top of the character but yeah apparently sora was uh trending for like days prior on end but there was also characters doom guy he got deconfirmed Crash Bandicoot was trending, 2B was trending, my boy Goku was trending. I, I thought Goku was going to be the one that was going to come in. But then I realized like quickly after that if he was to come into the Smash, he would be too broken. He wouldn't be able to fit. So it actually made sense for him to for them to save him for later when all the characters power scale because right now he's a little bit too powerful for the game. Anyway, guys, the entire internet went obviously wild. Okay, it's Sora from Kingdom Hearts seeing Disney, you know, <laughs> appear in a freaking Super Smash Brothers games is absolutely wild. I can't imagine how much it must have caused for them to show Mickey's emblem for just a couple of seconds. You don't even get to see Goofy and Donald, who is always with Sora. Sora came out there solo, flying backwards out of the Smash emblem after mario picked up the key blade and let me tell you man that was such an epic moment as soon as i saw that blade moved around i i instinctively thought to myself wow we've got sora that looks like a key blade and kingdom hearts for me was one of the first rpgs that kind of like 
got me here, you know? The game has beautiful music, has a beautiful concept. It's kind of confusing when you play all of it together, but it's definitely worth the experience. So this was very emotional for people because they get to see, like people like me, see Kingdom Hearts, one of my favorite RPGs, come into one of my favorite games of all time. But then also it's the end of the entire 2000, what, uh, 18 to 2021 since Smash Ultimate's been out and releasing DLC characters is, it's been a ride. So there's not too much to say outside of like, it was a great presentation. I definitely did a reaction on my second channel. And uh, yeah, also on top of that as well, uh, Sora looks really good in the game. He looks like he could be a little broken. <laughs> if he is, I don't really even care. It's my boy Sora. And uh, also, oh yeah, Kingdom Hearts uh, 1, 2, and 3 are apparently going to be coming out on the Switch. Or not even just 1, 2, and 3, just a bunch of ones so that you can play them all. But it's going to be coming out for the Nintendo Switch as well. There hasn't been a release date yet. And uh, Sora himself comes out, I believe it's October 18th, about two weeks from now, or about a week and a half at this point so yeah that's the nintendo sora showcase direct sakurai it, it's it's huge it was big it was trending for so long yesterday and i'm super excited i'm super glad as you can see i'm not super hyped right now and i'm still coming down from the hype i was i was feeling nervous about this uh direct this was the first direct where i actually felt nervous more nervousness than hype just because it was the last one. It's the uh, the end of an era. And I just want to make sure that uh, Sakurai gets lots of rest and goes on vacation and chills, enjoys his life and everything until he comes back later in the future if he wants to. So, you know, keep making special moments like this because he is definitely the go. But yeah, let me know how you guys feel about Sora uh, appearing as Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. Uh, did you like it? Were you not? Were you upset? Unfortunately, if you were upset about this news, then I'm sorry to say that if you play the Squid Game, you will die the first round. That's exactly right. Stop being a hater. <laughs> yeah, let me know how you guys feel. So guys, here's the big chunky wungy of the day, okay? This is the, you thought Sora when Smash was huge. It was very huge. It's definitely huge, but in terms of recent and trending, and what's been happening as of this morning this was absolutely breaking the largest hack that we have ever seen and like i don't even know this might be the biggest largest hack to amazon and twitch as a company in all time of history it's huge my boys at dexerto said twitch has reportedly had a massive data breach revealing sensitive info including earnings of top streamers other leaked info who's sending me a message my boy wolf phoenix said hey i'm gonna hear more news to cover in today's video it looks like twitch had a massive leak you think bro come on bro you interrupted my <laughs> i wanted to read this tweet from uh mudahar because he got this from 4chan no way this is real if true everything on twitch including source code and payouts are leaked change passwords i'm hoping addresses aren't part of this as well this is absolutely massive and if you look at this picture right here is a screen cap is on 4chan it says twitch leaks part one insinuating that there's going to be more insinuating this is just the beginning this is just the tip of the iceberg i uh, says we bring to you today an extremely poggers leak which is an american video live streaming service that focuses on video game live streaming including broadcasts of esports competitions operated by twitch interactive of subsidiary of amazon.com inc their community is also a disgusting toxic cesspool so to foster more disruption and competition in the online video streaming space we have completely pwned them uh, and in part one are releasing the source code from almost 6,000 internal Git repositories, including the entirety of Twitch.tv with commit history going back to its early beginnings, mobile, desktop, and video game console Twitch clients, various proprietary SDKs and internal AWS services used by Twitch, every other property that Twitch owns, including IGDB and CurseForge, an unreleased Steam competitor from Amazon Game Studios, and Twitch SOC internal red teaming tools, LOL. And and creator payouts from 2019 until now. Find out how much your favorite streamer is really making. Jeff Bezos paid $970 million for this. We're giving it away for free. Hashtag do better Twitch. God dang. That sucks. Anyway, a lot of people were talking about the payouts because everyone wants to know how much money, I guess, your favorite streamer is making. And uh, this person here tweeted here and said, Twitch has just had a major leak. A lot of stuff, including their monthly payouts to streamers. Here are some of the notables. Uh, note this total is just their payout directly from Twitch. So it doesn't include donations, sponsors, merch, 
etc so my guess is that this is uh what is this just subscriptions just um how much they get off that five dollar subscription and they get there's a cut usually it's split in half but sometimes you can get a better cut anyway just in the month of september some of the people that they've listed here i guess are some of the popular people here it says uh, xqc made seven hundred and fifty two thousand dollars in subscriptions only and one month hasanabe seven hundred and fifty two thousand that's <laughs> Good God! XQC made two hundred and ten thousand. Uh, some other notable names: Destiny at ten thousand, Saikuno at a uh, hundred and thirteen thousand, Shroud at, at hundred thousand, Moist Critical at one twenty, Ludwig at at one fifteen, Miskiff at one twenty, Amaranth at at ninety five, Pokimane at forty, uh, Forison at thirty two, Summit at three hundred and sixty two thousand. Uh, Tyler one at 213,000, S-Fan at, at 37K. So I'm guessing this number has to be something like with the number of subscribers you have times, you know, $5. But I also am curious to know if this is also included with bits. I know bits is a specific type of donation that goes directly to the Twitch payout. But yeah, here's a list of the people who got paid the most, the top in September actually ranked with XQC, Summit, Tyler, Hasanabi, Abai, Asmund Gold, Miskiv, Moist Critical, Ludwig, Saikuno, uh, you know, just people I just named. Iron Mouse, she's up here as well, good for her. And this number here seems to be a ranked stat of the total payout from August, 2019 all the way up until October 21. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, hold on to your butts. <laughs> Streamers get paid a lot of money. Number one going to critical role, $9.6 million. I think that's the guy that plays uh, Dungeons and Dragons. I think I've heard his name only like several times, but wow. XQC, not surprisingly being at the top, making $8.4 million. Jeez, uh, Summit at, at 5.8, then you have a, a big dip from the 8 million with Summit at 5.8, Tifu at 5.2, Nick Merckx at 5 million, Ludwig at 3.2, Ludwig killed it. Uh, Tim the Tatman at 3.2, it's just basically a ranking. I mean, obviously you guys can pause and you can scroll and you can look through all of these numbers here if you guys wanna see, but this is what's basically been leaked. The payout for these creators for roughly three years. So if you take that three years, divide like critical role by three, uh, he makes about $3.2 million uh, a year in subscriptions only. That does not count all the other sources of revenue that these guys get. Furthermore, and I think everyone's been basically been saying this, but uh, yeah, this is not all of their money. In fact, <laughs> the majority of these guys, that's just the basic payout. That's just the tip of the iceberg, okay? Because they get paid a lot more off of, of donations. They get paid a lot more off of sponsors, okay? If you get sponsors, sponsors are way more higher than whatever your subscriptions you probably get. They probably get paid out on special deals. Uh, merchandise, their merchandise is probably killing it. It's absolutely wild how much these guys are getting paid. So what you see there is not how much they're making. It's just a, a small portion <laughs> of the major amount that they're making. That doesn't include like people at like XQC who drops, you know, like videos, multiple videos every day on YouTube and voice critical stuff. These guys are, they're, they're making money. Okay. We all knew this, but now it's kind of putting into perspective a small fraction of how much they're making. Anyway, as you guys can imagine, uh, Twitter and everyone is getting big baby rage mad because they're just like, what? You guys are making that much money? How dare you? <laughs> When majority of these people on these Twitch streams make their sub counts very public, you can literally just do the math. But yeah, if you take the sub count, you multiply it times a certain amount, you'll probably get a number that's close to that. Uh, I don't know, again, if it includes the stream bits. But yeah, for the most part, this information that is being leaked right here is something that you can kind of compute if someone has their subscriptions available for you to see. Anyway, it looks like the hashtag uh, Twitch leak seems to be trending now at this point. People are using that to talk about it. This person said, that didn't age well. And uh, <laughs> Twitch made it a tweet that said, Facebook down, obligatory meme here, like button below. So, God dang. Karma, bro. This person said Twitch leak change checklist. Change password for Twitch and Amazon if linked. Make sure 2FA is on for Twitch and uh, Amazon if linked. That's the two factor authorization that usually links to your phone directly for confirmation. And reset your stream key. Be safe and keep an eye on your accounts. Um, this is the only first leak, part one of what could be part two, but apparently there's a lot of information out there that just got exposed. And if you do have an account on Twitch, it's better to be safe than sorry. This one's really fun. It says Twitch streamers after the Twitch leak. 
<laughs> and it's got your girl freaking jumping around, running away from the paparazzi. I think this video is actually fake, but it's a really good fake video. Speaking of Hassan, apparently he's trending. Whenever they talk about Hassan and him making money, it's just, it always goes wild. It says here, bro, come on. He tweeted this this morning, actually just a couple of minutes ago. He has 36,000, almost 37,000 tweets and probably going up talking about him because he uh he makes bank yeah guys that's the twitch leak in a nutshell again if you have an account change your stuff okay and otherwise yeah there's an eye opener for you guys for how much uh the top 0.01 percent of people on twitch make uh, on the platform and that's just a portion of all their cuts um in my opinion everyone's gonna have their opinion on how much people should make you know capitalism what's what's acceptable what's not someone making too much money someone not making enough money uh people donating uh to your your favorite uh i guess guys here when they already have millions of dollars kind of like donating to jeff bezos at this point right not really because jeff bezos is on another league but yes people are starting to say well hey why are you donating money to to these billionaires why are are you doing this yada 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 again we've talked about it it's a service okay you like the service you put the money into it and you get what you want out of it then it's an equivalent exchange as long as you feel comfortable with doing no one's putting you at a gun to subscribe to his son or donate money to him you can watch him for absolutely free i think another thing important thing to note when it comes to people making this money is the idea of taxes right uh i think how much people make again is questionable people like to say on the radar like some some people make too much money yada 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 but if these people are paying you know over 50 percent in taxes if they are spending a lot of money and, and putting it back out back into the government then in my opinion no harm no foul you know as long as you're not you know abating taxes <laughs> then uh i'm okay with it it's literally just putting into numbers something that we already knew i think what's worrisome is that the fact that this is just a part one of a leak uh whatever can come out next from this might be a little bit more worrisome this is the biggest uh breach that i've seen since um cyberpunk 2022 uh, when that game came out and they had everything of their assets leaked as well so yeah i'll let you guys know if there's any updates going forward if twitch responds if there's more more leaks coming forward. Anything that you need to know, let me know how you guys feel about this entire situation. Absolutely huge. One of the biggest data breaches of all time. And yeah, let me know how you guys feel about it. But all right, guys, that's all I have for today's video. I imagine this was a, a super big chunky wongi. If you made it through the whole thing, just do me a favor and drop a like. It means I kept your attention and or, I don't know, maybe you fell asleep to the video or... <laughs> but uh, yeah, it just kind of gives me a, a, a roll count to let me know that I did all right with the video. Um, subscribe if you guys haven't already. Just double check to make sure that you're subscribed. That would be really cool. Uh, the goal is to try to hit 400,000 by the end of the year. So if we can do that, that would be absolutely spectacular. And um, yeah, I'll probably probably see you guys tomorrow uh and then the day afterward as well so thanks for tuning in and you guys have a good one take it easy brush your teeth and floss drink your water hydrate stay safe out in them streets change your passwords <laughs> and have a good day peace